Hello and welcome to CSC 263 Database Management Systems, Episode 1. Um, so this course is going to um, dig into database management systems in general. And in more um, um, specific, we're going to talk about the relational databases. Um, the course is broadly divided into three main parts. In the first part, we'll talk about general concepts around data and databases. We won't go into any specific database language or database type, just you know some general um, ideas. Then we'll transition to the relational database management system, and we'll figure out how to analyze and design normalized relational databases. Once we've done that, we're going to talk about SQL, the language by which we can interact with these, these databases. And in the last part of this uh, video series, we're going to look a little bit more about database internals. Having said that, let's start at the beginning. Um, and as we always do, we have to agree on some basic terminology um, before we can continue talking. So let's do that in this video. Not the most exciting thing, but it does need to happen. We do follow a textbook in this class. Um, and as we um, bring up the different areas, we'll make it clear uh, that people know what the textbook is. I'll list it in the um, video comments. This is chapter one, at least the parts of chapter one uh, that I decided to record as a video. So let's um, get all of our thinking aligned. Why do we need a database in the first place and what role does databases do databases play in our overall approach to the design and development of information systems you should be coming into this class um, hopefully um, proficient in computer programming um, at least up to the intermediate level i don't expect you've uh, taken classes like data structures or algorithms and complexity but i do expect you to have completed at least at the Delphi University CSC 175, our intermediate computer programming, so that I can build on the topics that were presented in there. What we've learned so far is that when we build programs, um, we do that to solve a problem. And that's really all the computer is. It's a tool, a machine that can help us solve problems, but we do have to tell it exactly how we want those problems solved. When we look at enterprise applications in particular, lots of these problems that we're trying to solve involve data. Um, and the type of computer program whose primary purpose is data processing um, is called an information system. So those are the enterprise applications focusing on manipulating and processing data storing data, retrieving data, reporting on data, um, enriching data. But in any case, a data-driven process is what is supported by information systems. And of course, that data has to be stored somewhere, and that's called the database. And that's what we're going to figure out in this class. So technically, what we're going to do um, is focus on that definition. We're going to focus on computer programmers, tools that help us solve problems but in this particular case problems that have to deal with the collection the processing storing retrieving and presentation of information the database does all of that now what is a database the database is a persistent collection of structured data um, that sounds like a simple definition but there's actually quite a few elements in there First of all, we talk about persistence, and that means that we want to be able to, you know, basically put stuff in our database and then come back to it at some point in the future. And unless we have touched it ourselves, that data should still be there exactly in the same way that we left it. Um, that's persistence, where we don't necessarily want to have to think about oh the computer is going to reboot or there's going to be a power outage or there's going to a disk failure or you know whatever it may be however we leave the data behind when we go somewhere we expect that data to be waiting for us when we come back and so that's the persistence part of the database the second part of the database definition is that we're dealing with structured information 
even though we can store unstructured information into a database, large amounts of binary data, for example, blobs, binary large objects, the database is not particularly well suited to deal with them. They can do store and retrieve, but unless we give some structure to that data, there is not a whole lot we can do with it in terms of manipulation. So our databases, and especially the relational databases, are good in dealing with structured data. Keep in mind that the vast majority of data that we manipulate on a day-to-day -day basis is unstructured data. It is information contained in you know, slide presentations, in email messages, in text messages, in posts to social media, or whatever it may be. That's not really considered structural information in the terms of relational databases. In a relational databases, we really want to split out and really describe in detail what each data element means. So the database itself is that persistent collection. The database management system is software. Um, and that's the software that manages access to the database. And so don't mix those two up. The database is the data. The database management system is how you access the data. You build an extra layer in between the stuff that you want to store and the method in which you access it. Up till now, when we've been um, learning how to program, we most likely, um, when we dealt with file I.O., had to open our files ourselves, had to read those files either line by line or record by record, and then process those as we read them. That's not what we're doing when we talk about the use of database management systems. When we use a DBMS, we make a connection to the database management system and we let it worry about how to get that data from disk to us and how it goes from us back to disk. We do not operate at the file level. The DBMS provides an abstraction layer for that and provides a whole lot of additional functionality because of that. So we are not going to deal with file I.O. directly. We let the DBMS worry about that. And then lastly, we have the data itself. You know, the data is stored in the database. And so the data is contained in the database. The database is accessed through the DBMS. And the software that accesses the database management system, or interacts with it, that's called the database application. And typically, when we now develop software, we do that as a database application. So we interact with the DBMS, the DBMS interacts with the database in order to retrieve the data. Um, notice that the word information is not in here. Um, information is a related concept, but information is data in context. And so as a database, we don't care about information. We only care about the data. It's our data application, our database application, that will convert that data into information for its user. So let's look at some examples. Um, we interact with databases all day long, um, maybe now a little bit different than others. Um, you know, for example, as I'm recording this, we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. So you know, we don't go out as much as we otherwise would do, but um, it's still um, something that we interact with on a regular basis. So for example, if I go to a store um, and I scan my items as I'm getting ready to check out, all of that is stored and retrieved in a database. As I scan my product, it basically means that at that point, the point of third terminal is going to go back to the database to figure out what the price of that system is so it can charge me the appropriate amount. It's also going to then figure out what kind of taxes needs to be paid uh, for this particular product, if any. Um, it might even update the inventory of the database when I check out to reduce the amount of available products by whatever it is that I just um, checked out of. And it might keep trail of me as an individual who's buying these, app, uh, these products so that and it comes down to you know, coupons or other kinds of direct marketing equipment uh, efforts. The database has a profile about me, which they can use to mine and send me customized options. All of that stuff that point of sale terminal is really an advanced um, database application that updates data in real time. Anytime that I log into a computer, 
um, on campus or at home. You know, I, my username and my password are checked and they're checked against data stored in a database somewhere on the computer or maybe on the network through directory services or online uh, databases. So uh, as I do that, an audit trail is created where it records who logged in at what, but that data that is stored in the database. I'm not going to be opening all these different um, files myself. Now, in one case, the database might be a relational database sitting somewhere in the background. In other cases, it might be a Windows event log, um, but it's still a database. It's a persistent collection of structured data. Same thing when we go to class um, and register for our courses for the next term, or we, when, when we look at our grades, all that information is structured information, and that information is stored somewhere in a database, accessed from a database application which interacts with the database management system. And so to be able to identify exactly what element of this entire process is data, which part of the process is executed by the database management system, and which part of the process should be done by the data application will help us focus our efforts. If we are busy creating a database application, we should let the DBMS do its thing and not try to duplicate its functionality. Um, and so knowing where our efforts fit in the overall picture is extremely helpful to use these tools effectively. I already mentioned it a few times, normally uh, without a database management system and maybe without a network, um, if we wanted to store data, we had to open files and close files directly, maybe seek through files, figure out what file format we're using, um, figure out where in the file system our files are stored. That leads to all kinds of problems and operational issues. Sometimes uh, it might be an efficiency gain, but most of the time it cannot. So, for example, if I have to put all of my data for the different applications that I use in proprietary files for each of those applications, it becomes a lot harder to use that information to, for example, analyze it or report on it. So the separation and isolation of data makes that querying and that reporting a lot harder. It's difficult, um, you know, programming languages change over time. Your file formats may have to change with them. Ideally, you don't want to have to worry about that. You know, you can pass the data off to the DBMS and tell it to hold on for you. You don't want to have to worry about file formats and deprecation of programming languages and all of that kind of stuff yourself. It also means that if every application stores data on its own, that data becomes a lot harder to manage and maintain. Um, it becomes a lot harder to reuse that data as well. And mostly because one, you might not even know it's there. And two, if it's stored in some kind of obscure file mo format, you might not be able to use it. And that means that you, for example, may end up in a situation where you're duplicating a lot of information. Ideally, from a data management perspective, every bit of information that you store or need for your application or your processes should only be stored once and then reused wherever else it is needed. That has a large number of benefits. It has a benefit from a security perspective. It has a benefit from an audit perspective. It has a benefit from an efficiency perspective. Um, but if everyone and everything uses their own proprietary file formats, you really have no option than to actually have to re um, store that data for each application that uses it. And that means that as soon as that information changes, you have to not only update it in one location, you have to update it in all locations. That is simply in practice not going to happen. And as a result, you end up with databases that are out of sync. And when you have two databases that are out of sync, they are contradictory to each other. And the question becomes, which one is right? Um, you know, in many cases, you'd rather have no information than bad information, especially if you don't know that the information is bad. So as much as we can, we'd like to reuse that information so that we only have to store it in one place. And lastly, security and sharing is usually not considered when it comes to data. Um, the database system is a specialized application, like I said, it only develops with data, but it also means that since all the data manipulation, the storage and all of that um, work 
is done through the DBMS, you don't have to worry about it as a developer. You can focus on the core functionality of what your application needs to do. Programming is hard enough as it is. You know, if you can pass some of the programming load off to someone else, in this case the DBMS, go ahead and do it. The other benefit that we have, is, especially in terms of relational databases, is that a database is often self-describing, which means that I should be able to go to a database and ask it, hey, what data do you have? Who owns that data? What does the data look like? Um, how can I access that data? All of these questions I can ask the database management system directly rather than have to go hunt for it throughout my organization. And so by doing that, by making the data self-describing, what we're basically doing is creating a layer of metadata on one side, data about the data, and then the data itself. But it also means that we can reason at an abstract level about data. If I know what the data means, I can speak about the meaning. I don't have to then actually look at the data. For example, I can say that a student has a name, a first name and a last name, that a student has an email address and maybe a GPA. And in none of those discussions do I actually have to talk about a specific student. I don't have to say that, you know, John Smith has a 3.82 GPA. I don't care at that point that there is a student called John Smith. I want to be able to reason about this data from an abstract perspective. The database management systems make all of that stuff possible. And then lastly, the benefit of using a DBMS is that I can have multiple programs and multiple processes ac accessing the same data at the same time without being in each other's way and still maintaining secure security. And of course, you would have to build that by yourself. That's a full-time job in its own right. That was chapter one. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about chapter two, the database environment.